This is a proper unboxing, eh? Exactly. Last time we were left waiting for the courier to bring the Z-axis. And then it arrived. Ah, oh, the simple pleasures of life. I made a complicated back plate out of 18mm birch ply so I could attach it to the rest of the machine because, of course, none of the holes lined up, but that was fine. It looks a little rough, but it's solid and the holes are all in the right place. The motor's connected to the wiring loom very easily and Rob has colour-coded them so even I can't get these wrong. And then it was time to turn on the controller. The computer and the controller are set up in an old cupboard. It might not be very high-tech but it's perfect for keeping the dust off. And now I was a little worried that the new Z motor might act oddly when I first turned it on, you know, fly up to the ceiling or just sit there smoking gently, like my granny used to do. <laughs> but all went well. Later, we had to change the motor settings in the software to get it spot on, but at this point it was all looking good. So I connected the router, and then I realised I'd made a very big mistake. I think that makes 8 million and 3? <laughs> I don't know. There was still way too much deflection of the milling bit. It wasn't down to the modifications I'd made to the gantry, that seems fine, and it wasn't even the way I'd attached the new Z-axis rails, it's just that I bought the wrong Z-axis rails. I bought this one, and I should have bought one more like this, and the difference is the size of the plate that the router is attached to. The one I'd bought has a tiny plate, and so there was very little support for the router, and then there was also movement inside the plate itself. In hindsight, I can now see how silly I had been. But at the time, I was concentrating on the price and on the amount of travel it could do and on the size of the motor. Oh well. Now, I could perhaps have sent it back to China, but that would have taken six weeks and then another six weeks for a replacement to arrive. Because China's a long way from here. But life's way too short for that, so... I had a go at modifying it with the things I had in the workshop already. Some aluminium tube and some V bearings. I cut the aluminium on my woodworking saws, but very slowly in case it chipped the teeth. Basically, I just made another bigger sled that rolls up and down over the original rails. It did take a bit of trouble to get the bearings in the right place because they are not adjustable, but it wasn't very difficult. All it has to do is increase the triangulation so there's less wobble. to sand down the rails a little till it ran more smoothly than this. This is me transferring the locations of the holes to the new wooden plate. If these aren't in exactly the right place then the router might not end up vertical.
and then I put it all back onto the gantry. There's a whole lot of stuff on there now, <laughs> and I haven't even thought about how to attach the dust extraction hose yet, or the cup holder. And then I attached the router again. Mm -hmm. And now it all seems so much more rigid, which was quite a relief. Of course, you're going to say this is a very small router for such a big table, and you might be right, but for the sort of contour cuts I want to make, I just don't great. need anything That's bigger. great. Yet, anyway. <laughs> right then, time for a first test cut. This is um, a three millimeter milling bit. Looking at it now, it seems to be running a bit fast, but it coped fine and nothing broke. This is the simple outline shape I cut out. These are going to be the wedges that hold my guitar machines in place. This is really exciting. <laughs> if you don't know CNC, then you'll just have to take my word for it. But when you draw a little shape and the machine cuts it out perfectly, as if by magic, without snarling up or setting fire to itself, then it's a very exciting and great feeling. The next piece I tried needs to have very accurate, very small rectangular holes in it. So I changed to a smaller milling bit. This is just two millimeters across, so it has to go through the wood much more slowly or it will just snap. I'm still learning the software, but Rob and Will keep steering me right and I seem to be getting somewhere already. So I'm very happy about that. Thank you, lads. So look, I'm nearly there now with this whole project. I still have to figure out the dust extraction and um, machine the whole bed level. And then perhaps I can try cutting something a little bigger. Tune in next time for the next thrilling episode. <laughs>